back to my channel. If you watch my channel on a regular basis, you know that the last month or so I have been cooking with sourdough a lot. And I've gotten a lot of questions about how to make a sourdough starter. Let me preface this by saying I am in no, by no means a sourdough expert. I am a complete beginner, but I've had some successes and I've had some failures along the way. So, so many of you have asked if I can show how to make a starter, sourdough starter, say that 10 times in a row. So that is what this video is going to be. Now this video is going to be a long filming video. I have to film it over eight to 10 days to show you each day. So today is day one and we are going to start our sourdough starter. Like I said, I have had successes and failures. The failures I had were when I, I think when I was overcomplicating it, I would get you know my scale out and I would measure that exact 53 grams of flour and 53 grams of water and if it was more, I would try to take out and I drove myself nuts and guess what? My starter didn't come out really good. And then I was watching one of my favorite YouTube channels, Faith and Flour, and Robin, the lady on that channel, made a sourdough starter and she made it look so easy. And she was just measuring with measuring cups and she really wasn't overthinking it. So I decided, you know what? I like to wing it in the kitchen anyway, so that's what I'm gonna do. Can I tell you, it is the best sourdough starter I have ever had. I've let it go dormant in the fridge. I've brought it back out. I use it constantly. I've even changed flowers that I've been feeding it. So it's a great, great method. So I thought I would start a new one and take you through it step by step. Like I said, this is Robin's method over at Faith and Flower. So I am going to link her channel below, her video for the sourdough, and you can watch hers also because that's where I got mine from. So Robin, thank you so very much for making me successful in my sourdough. So why sourdough? It's great because it's so versatile. You can use it for so many things. I make sourdough English muffins. I make sourdough pizza crust, pancakes, crepes. You can do bagels. You can do, of course, sourdough bread. So many things you can do with it. And with sourdough, you grow your own yeast, so you don't need yeast. So last year, when we were in total lockdown, sourdough was a great thing to, to do because yeast was hard to find. Although so was flour, so six one half dozen of the other. But it's great because it keeps on going and going. Now I've had my sourdough starter for a couple weeks and I just keep letting it grow and I use it. So, you know, it doesn't grow too much. This is my starter. Still growing, still active, still wonderful. I just used it this morning to make a pizza crust for a breakfast pizza. I'm gonna be using it tomorrow to make sourdough pancakes. And then I'll probably put it in the fridge and let it go dormant for a couple days. And that's just so I don't have to feed it. But we'll talk about that more as the week progresses. So let's just get started making the sourdough starter. If you have five minutes, some filtered water, some flour, a glass bowl, you can do this. So how I start mine, and flour does matter, I think. Um, I had the best success when I started mine with whole wheat flour. I have since transitioned it over to unbleached, which is very important, all-purpose flour. But starting it with the whole wheat flour gave me the best result. Now, rye flour apparently gives you an amazing result, but I didn't want to use rye flour. It was just a little too earthy for me for what I wanted to use it for. So all I'm going to do is take a cup of whole wheat flour. I'm not weighing it. I'm not getting crazy. I'm just going to take a cup. Put it in my glass bowl. Don't use plastic or metal. Definitely use glass and use something that'll be large enough to mix in. You saw my container now that I use, and I did that because I do store it in the fridge and all. So I, but this is the bowl that I did start my, my starter in. So one cup of whole wheat flour, one cup 
of lukewarm room temperature filtered water. The filtered part is important because you do not want chlorine in it. If you do not have a water filter or access to filtered water, all you need to do is put your one cup of water out on the counter overnight because chlorine dissipates pretty quickly. And then we're just gonna mix it up. I like to use a wooden spoon. Once again, try not to use metal. Mix it real well. And that is the beginning of your sourdough starter. I'm just going to cover it with a cloth and leave it sit out right on my counter. Now tomorrow, today is day one. Tomorrow will be day two. And what we will do is we will have it and feed it. The reason you need to discard some of your starter is because if you continue to feed it, you're gonna have starter filling up your entire kitchen because you really should feed it as much as is in there, if that makes sense. So tomorrow what we'll do is we will take half of this out and just discard it. I know it freaks a lot of people out about discarding the starter. It's only pennies. You know, I am not a wasteful person, but it's only pennies. And once you have an established starter, you don't have to discard. You can actually use that fed starter, but we'll get into all that later. But tomorrow we're just going to take half of it out and I'm gonna eyeball it. And then we're gonna feed it again, one cup of whole wheat flour and one cup of distilled water, mix it, put it aside. And we are going to do that for the first six days, feeding it every 24 hours. Does it have to be 24 hours on the dot? No, but it should be around it. Like don't make it at eight o'clock in the morning and then not feed it until the next day at 10 o'clock at night. That's a little too long and your starter will get hungry. So just kind of note the time and then tomorrow around the same time, we will feed our starter. So I will see you all tomorrow. Okay, it is day two of the sourdough starter. Here it is. You can see it's starting to bubble a little bit after just one day. And if you can see right along the edges, there's a little bit of liquid that's called hooch. And it just means that the starter's hungry. I'm actually feeding this a little bit later than I intend it to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just stir it up. And then we need to reduce it by half, like we talked about yesterday. The first time I made sourdough starter, I was like I said, a crazy woman with the measuring and the weighing and all. Now I just kind of eyeball it. So I'm just gonna go in and take out what I think's about half. And then we're gonna feed it. I'm gonna feed it with one cup of whole wheat flour and one cup of filtered water. Give it a stir. Now I did learn something because we're always learning. My starter that I've had established for a couple weeks now was really thin and I wasn't sure why. So I reached out to a sourdough expert and she told me to, when I feed it, feed it a cup of flour, but only a half a cup of water. So I kind of did a little bit of maintenance on my starter today. I reduced it a lot because it was getting way too much, uh, much more than I can use. And then I did that. I fed it half the amount of water to the flour that I fed it. Okay, so there we go. Day two is in the books. We're just gonna cover it again, push it back on the counter, and then tomorrow will be day three, and it's gonna be exactly like today. This is my starter, and it looks like a different color because I've transitioned this over from whole wheat flour to all purpose, unbleached all purpose flour. That's why mine's a little bit lighter in color, but this did start out exactly the way 
that that bowl is. So this is all ready for some sourdough pancakes again tomorrow morning. And hmm, not sure what else, maybe some more English muffins because I do need to make those. So that's day two and we'll be back for day three and see what our starter looks like. Okay, we are on day three. Once again, we've got hooch. Not quite sure why, but we're just gonna mix it in and then we're gonna get rid of half the starter, just like we did on day two. I'm gonna get rid of about three quarters of a cup. And then I'm gonna add in one cup of whole wheat flour, and one cup of water. Give it a stir. Cover it up and we'll take a look at it tomorrow. Tomorrow we should start really seeing some activity. It should start being a little bit more alive and we shall see. Um, in comparison, show you my starter. Very much alive, doing very well. And this is what we're hoping happens to this one. So we'll be back on day four to see what we have. It is day four and look at that. That is a beautiful live starter. You can see it really, really grew in size. Look at all these wonderful bubbles. So just like on all the other days, what we need to do is we need to have it and then we need to feed it. So I am going to, oh, I'm going to stir it first before I feed it. I'm gonna get rid of half of it or approximately half of it. That looks good. And then we're gonna feed it. And once again, just once a day right now, we are going to start feeding it twice a day. And then when we hit day eight, it should be ready to go. And once it's ready to go, once you have an established starter and you start using it, you do not have to have it because you'll be using it. If you're not gonna use it, you'll put it in the fridge and let it go dormant. That's what I did this morning with my starter, my established starter. So here we go. Day four is complete. We're just gonna cover it up. We are going to put it in my nice warm kitchen and come back tomorrow and see what we have. Tomorrow will also be just another one day once a day feed. And then once we hit days six, seven, and eight, we'll be feeding it twice. Here we are at day five. Look at that beauty. Nice and bubbly. So we're gonna give it a good stir. I should probably change the bowl, but I'm not going to. And then we're gonna get rid of about half of it or so. I try not to dump this down the drain just because it's like cement. <laughs> and I don't like to put it in the compost because animals really like it. So I try to just dump it in the trash. 
Okay, we're gonna add one cup of whole wheat flour and one cup of filtered water. Give it a stir. Same thing, just like we've done on every other day. This definitely teaches you patience, but it is exciting to see it bubbling and growing and knowing that it's working. So we're gonna get that all nice and combined and once again, just cover it. Now tomorrow, it's your choice. Either on day six or day seven, you can start feeding it every 12 hours instead of every 24. I think I usually do day seven and day eight, but this is doing so well, I might bump it up a day because I am gifting this. I'm not gonna keep it because I have so much of my own. This is going over to Denise over at Dish with D because she wants to give it a try. So I told her not to worry about starting her own. She could just have this one. So there it is. We're gonna cover it and we'll see it tomorrow. Okay, day six of our starter. Still looking very good, very alive and very bubbly. So today is gonna be the last day that I feed it once. Tomorrow, day seven and day eight, I'm gonna feed it every 12 hours. So I'm gonna feed this tomorrow morning and then in the afternoon. So first thing we do is scoop some out. Now this is to the point where it's probably mature enough to use the discard, but we're not going to. Now tomorrow when I start feeding this, I'm still gonna do a cup of flour, but I'm gonna reduce the water to a half a cup. I like a thick sourdough starter, and I think when we're doing one-to-one, -one, it's way too runny. So starting tomorrow, I'm gonna start reducing the amount of water. I'm also gonna get a new bowl and clean this one. Okay. So we're just gonna put this aside. And I just wanna show you what I was talking about with the thickness. Here's my starter. I pulled it out of the refrigerator this morning because I do need to mix this up for some English muffins. But see how thick mine is? It's like a thick pancake batter. And actually, I'd even like it a little bit thicker, so I may reduce a little bit. So I'm gonna use my starter tonight and mix up some English muffin dough, because that does have to sit overnight, it has to sit for a few hours, eight to 12 hours to ferment a little bit. So I will do that tonight, and that's another video you'll probably see on my weekend vlog. So there we have it. Day six is in the books, and two more days, and I say this will be ready to go. Here we are on day seven. It's still looking beautiful. So I'm just going to mix it up, reduce it and feed it for the first time. Now today and tomorrow, day seven and day eight, I am feeding it twice a day. And I am also changing a little bit how I'm feeding it. Um, I'm going to, let's get rid of it first. Probably should have used this to make some pancakes for the freezer. I'm gonna put in the one cup of flour. Now this is our first feed of the day, don't forget, twice today. I'm only gonna put in about a half to three quarters of a cup of water. I have found that I like a thicker starter. And once it's established and it's alive and bubbly, you can kind of play with it and do that. My starter was really, really thin and I reached out to a sourdough expert and I asked what her opinion was, and this is what she told me to do for a thicker starter, was to reduce the water by half of the flour. So 
That's what I'm doing with this. We'll see if it works. Because I didn't do mine until it was established, you know, for a few weeks. But I can't imagine it won't work since it was very established. There you go. You can see that is a little thicker. I'll look and see what it is tonight at the second feeding. And we'll go from there. And I am going to take it out of this bowl, put it in a different bowl, clean this one, and put it back in. Because we are getting a little crusty. So there you go. Day seven, feeding one. It is day seven, feed two. We're still alive. We're thicker, which is what I like. So let's get rid of some. Now we're at the point where this discard, we could actually use, like I said, for pancakes or something. I should probably keep it and use it for my pancakes tomorrow, but I'll ditch it. One cup and then about three quarters. So tomorrow will be it. It will be the last time I double feed it. Today could probably be the last time. You just have to kind of look at it. I mean, if it's nice and alive and bubbly, you're good to go. Now, if I was keeping this to use as a starter, I would probably use it tomorrow morning for pancakes or something. I don't recommend making bread right away. I recommend letting your starter really establish for a couple weeks before you try to make a loaf of sourdough bread. But by all means, you know, English muffins, pancakes, whatever. And then you can put it right in the fridge. Let it be dormant until you're ready to use it again. It's really not that hard. And as you can see, I'm kind of going by look and feel at this point. And I think I said before, I will link down in the description box below some ladies that are much better at sourdough than I am. And maybe by watching my video and their videos, you can kind of come up with your plan. So there we go. Covering it up and tomorrow will be the last day. Okay, this is going to be the last time that I feed this. Um, it does need to be fed one more time today, but that's going to be the recipient's problem, not mine. And if you haven't already guessed who the recipient is, this starter is going over to Dish with D. So it's all hers and she can deal with it. So I am going to reduce it. And see how nice and thick this is now? This is how I like my starter. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do one cup of flour to about three quarter cup of water. In the beginning, like I said, the first six days, do one to one. Then you can start playing with it. And if you noticed when I took the cover off, it was nice and alive and bubbly and fresh. So now if you think it's a little too thick, which I think this is, add a little bit more water. So it might not exactly be three quarters, this is one of those things where you just have to play with it. And the longer you keep it and the longer you do it, the more comfortable you will get with it. And you'll figure out how you like your starter. This morning when I made my pancakes, my starter was actually a little too thin and they got a little dense. But I mean, they were still delicious. And it was because I didn't feed it within the last 12 hours, so was probably more like 18. But these are the things that you learn. So there it is. Day eight starter and it is ready to go. And like I said, I would recommend using it 
for pancakes and English muffins and stuff like that in the beginning before you jump in and make a beautiful loaf of artisan bread because they definitely do better with a more mature starter. So I'd probably wait about two weeks or so, three weeks until you do that. So there you have it, eight days worth of starting a sourdough starter. So there you have it. It was easy. It's really easy. Don't be afraid of it. I was afraid of it for a long time and that's why I didn't do it. And then after my first go around, that wasn't very successful, I gave it up. I'm really, really glad I tried again and I'm really glad I tried with a little bit more of a laid back method. Now, let's talk about storing it because Unless you are making something with sourdough every single day, which most of us are not, you don't want to leave it out on your counter every day because you're going to have to reduce it and feed it and reduce it and feed it. And that's a waste. Generally, I use mine on the weekends, sometimes during the week, but generally on the weekends. So usually on Sunday afternoon, I will put it in the fridge. After I feed it, I will put it in the fridge and I'll leave it in the fridge until like Thursday or Friday, depending on when I'm gonna use it and what I'm gonna use it for. A lot of sourdough recipes you need to start the night before because it needs to ferment. That's one of the big benefits of sourdough. It is a fermented food. Fermented foods are great natural probiotics. They are great for your gut and they are also easier to digest. So that's why a lot of them need overnight attention or overnight sitting. Like the sourdough muffins that I make, I mix it up Friday night. By Saturday morning, it is ready to add a few more ingredients to and ready to go. Pancakes, you can do immediately. Um, a lot of cakes you mix up the night before, things like that. Fermenting it is definitely better for the health benefits of sourdough. It's not always necessary, but a lot of times you get a better result. So with that said, um, like I said, I keep mine in the fridge. I just put it in the back of the fridge. Now, if I'm gonna store it longer than a week, if I'm not going to use it, I will take it out and feed it. And then I leave it out for a few hours, make sure it you know, bubbles up and make sure it's still alive and I'll put it back in the fridge. But if you're not going to use it, you can keep it as long as you want, just feed it at least once a week. If you forget, it could probably go two weeks, absolutely. I wouldn't push it any longer than that. But it's great because like I said, you can store it and you don't have to continue feeding it. You don't have to continue using it. Um, you know, and like I said, the with pancakes, it's great to use the discard for pancakes. I'll make pancakes Sunday morning, um, you know, take out what I need for the pancakes and that's technically my discard, then I'll feed it and keep going. So I am going to be making a loaf of sourdough bread very soon. Um, probably next weekend is my guess. Um, so I'm excited to do that. I've done it before and it's been very successful. I just wanted to really make sure that this, this starter was nice and mature and I just wanna make sure I have time. And I like to plan my meals, like I wanna have something to eat it with, like soup or pasta or something like that, so. There you have it. Now, like I said, I am certainly not a sourdough expert. I am a novice. So I will link the channels below that have helped me so very much. One is Farmhouse on Boone. The owner of that channel, Lisa, is a pretty much a sourdough expert. She uses it for every single solitary thing. Um, and she has a couple great Q&A videos. I will link her plate, her sourdough playlist down in the description box. So it'll be all her sourdough um, videos. And I will also link Robin from Faith and Flower. I will link her sourdough starter video down below. Watch mine, go watch theirs. They'll give you a different perspective maybe. Um, like I said, they're a little bit more advanced than I am with it. So I hope you enjoy this and I hope you will try it's really not that expensive. I mean, flour's cheap. Like where I live, um, five pounds of all-purpose unbleached flour store brand is like $1.19. And water, you know, filtered water, 
we have a water filter, so it's nothing. Um, I guess it's pennies if you think about it. But give it a try. What you got to lose, right? So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them. But like I said, most of your questions can be answered from either Lisa or Robin, I'm sure, and probably much better than I can. So let me know down below if you make sourdough starter, if you want to try it, if I've encouraged you to try it, let me know. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic, fantastic day.